Hello, my name is Salman Yusuf. I'm presenting our research, which is the volume estimation for hazard reduction burn using a voxel-based approach. The co-authors for this paper are Dr. Jack Barton, Dr. Ben Gorte, and Professor Sissi Zlatanova. The rising global warming has induced the world's climate to change abruptly when natural disasters occur with high severity and high frequency. This costs lives, distress infrastructure, disturbs established environmental cycles, and affects the health, well-being, and economic resilience. For example, the increasing temperature dehydrates the vegetation and brings the fuel closer to its combustion point. This causes severe and frequent burns. There are four factors that contribute to bushfire, which are the temperature, vegetation type, topography, and wind. The 2019-2020 bushfire has been dubbed as one of the worst bushfire seasons in Australia. About 2 million hectares of land in New South Wales and Queensland alone were wasted. More than a billion animals have also perished during this time. This is why it is paramount that communities and fire authorities in bushfire-prone regions of Australia understand fire-related characteristics of nearby bush in order to comprehend the potential hazard for these fuels and their related fire behavior for effective decision making. This is an illustration of a forest profile. It consists of five vegetation components. The crown fuel, less than four meter height. It consists of leaves and twigs. Bark fuel covers the tree trunk, upper branches, and twigs. Usually right above the ground is considered surface fuel, which usually consists of material with a mixture of dead and live fuel. At 0.3 meters to 0.6 meters, it is considered near surface fuel, and at 0.6 meters to 2 meters, it is considered elevated fuel. Near surface fuel and elevated fuel controls the spread of fire from the ground to the crown layer. Once it reaches the crown layer, an out of control higher severity bushfire is inevitable. One of the aspects to be considered for this guide are the fuel load to assess the hazard score. Fuel load is the accumulation of vegetation in a forest profile that are measured in tons per hectare. Fuel load is an important factor and it is crucial to get the right form of data because underestimating the fuel load leads to low estimates of bushfire. The risks eliminating areas for hazard reduction burn, leaving properties underprepared. Overestimating leads burning when aware is unrequired. This has environmental cost and logistical implication. The traditional method of measuring fuel load is by cutting the vegetation, over drying it, and then weighing it. This method is time consuming, labor intensive, and costly. This is why it becomes increasingly important to investigate automatic approaches to acquire fuel load data. LIDAR has been extensively used in the study of forestry characteristics. Most research done with LIDAR focuses on quantifying the crown fuel and the vertical structure of trees in a forest profile. There are limited studies done in the near surface fuel, elevated surface fuel, and surface fuel. For this research, we're using a voxel-based approach to study the point cloud of the forestry profile. Voxel is a volumetric pixel, and it is suited for this research as they are simple and unified, as can be seen in the illustration. The terrain is put through a voxel space. Inside the voxel space, there are voxels that could either be empty or filled. For this research, we are interested in the field voxels. Processing in voxel space brings three major advantages to the point cloud space. First, the size of the data to be processed can be reduced significantly. Second, the voxel space allows to establish connectivity horizontally and vertically, which facilitates analysis. Third, the effect of different point density can be reduced, which will be favorable for fuel estimation. The workflow on the right shows our approach for this research. Using airborne LiDAR, we scan the area of interest, determine the special resolution. Once the resolution is determined, the forest profile needs to be classified, which are based on the canopy, tree trunk, elevated surface fuel, near sur and near surface fuel. After the elevated surface fuel and the near surface fuel was determined, we calculated the point density to understand where the highest vegetation points are located. The outcome of this research is a fuel load map at near surface and elevated fuel. 
The methodology was applied to a data set representative of a typical Australian bushland obtained from Fire and Rescue New South Wales in Bramwell Place Park, Warner Spring, Newcastle. The airborne LiDAR point cloud is connected by a low altitude drone platform and has an absolute accuracy of 50 mm range at 50 m range of RMSE with three returns. An RMS ranging error of 30 mm and a scan rate of 420k points per square meter. The point cloud was transformed into a local coordinate system by truncating the geographical coordinate with the minimum values of X, Y, and Z. Picture 3 shows the point densities of point cloud across the study area. In this visualization, each pixel is 1 meter square and has density shown representative of the number of lighter points at each vertical columns. Picture 4 shows the distribution of point density classes. The most frequent class is at 300 to 400 points per meter square. This suggests that the point density within each cell is sufficient for modeling and analysis. The voxel analysis are performed with an in-house J-based software. Determining the spatial resolution of the voxel space is very important as it determines the subdivision of points in the voxel space. This is a 2D representation of a voxel space. A illustrates that all cells are non-empty. B has a higher resolution having 16 cells that are non-empty and one that is empty. C illustrates that there are 21 empty cells if the resolution is four times finer. Fuel load assessment uses a diameter of 0.50 meters to knee height. A voxel's resolution of 0.40 meter was determined to be optimal for this research in that each structure of fuel layers could be classified belonging to a particular stratum of voxels and subdivided accordingly. After the resolution has been determined, we proceed to classify the terrain in the forest profile in order to get the true height from the ground to the canopy. In picture one, the terrain is normalized by shifting the upper profile to the lower profile. This was achieved using triangular irregular network by subdividing the point cloud through a square grid of tiles 4 meters by 4 meters and taking the lowest point from it. The voxel space is then created above the normalized tin. The canopy region are classified by assuming the crowns of the trees from the high density region of field voxels in the voxelized point cloud. The region are determined based on applying 3D mathematical morphological operation like dilation and erosion. The structural element used for dilation and erosion considers the nearest neighboring voxels. Canopy was determined in three steps as can be seen in picture 1, 2, and 3. Two iterations of dilations are applied to the first picture to fill up the holes in the canopy. This also makes the components in the voxel space to increase. Four iteration of erosion and two iteration of dilation are applied in picture two. This makes a small object in the voxel space that got extended like the tree trunk and understory fuel layer to disappear. Connected component labeling is applied to assign unique label to the adjacent object voxels. After this, the size of each object can be easily established from a histogram and only large objects remain as canopy. After the canopy has been classified, we go on to classify the tree trunk. The voxel based approach proved efficient in classifying the tree trunks in a voxel space. The tree trunks cut vertically through the voxel space through the understory fuel layer and end up to support the canopy. For this study, the trunks would have resulted in overestimation of data when calculating the voxel volume of the near surface and elevated fuel. As an in-house J routine identifies vertically contiguous voxel columns, assuming they approximate tree trunks. If there is a large enough connected group of field voxels, we expect this to be a typical of a trunk. The routine looks for groups of 10 vertical voxels with at least 9 field. Picture 4 shows the forest profile in a section of a voxel space having the width of 10 voxels. The mid graphic shows the isolated tree trunks and the lower shows just the remaining voxels. They can be considered vegetation that have to be assessed for fuel volume. The, coloring, the color coding shows red to blue and red represents the more non-empty voxels in the section and blue as the less non-empty voxels. Having removed everything but the structural layers of the elevated surface and near surface, the two layers can be further analyzed 
to estimate the amount of undergrowth of vegetation at each level. It is important to state the lowest box on each column representing the ground plate, having no lighter points below the ground level. This is voxel 0. At resolution of 0.40 meters, voxel 1 and voxel 2 represent near surface fuel and elevated surface fuel is upward from voxel 3. In this slide, we show the elevated fuel and the near surface fuel visualized through cloud compare. After the uh, near surface and elevated surface fuel have been identified and classified, we go on to calculate the point densities in those uh, of the points in those layers. As can be seen on the picture on the left, which is the elevated surface fuel, and the picture on the right is the near surface fuel, the accumulation of the vegetation points can be seen. These are seen at 0.40 meter resolution. And so uh, the ones that are empty are voxels that do not contain any points, and the ones that are filled, which can, are red over here, are the filled voxels. After the point density at elevated surface fuel and near surface fuel have been achieved, we go on to take circular radius of 10 meters across the plot and calculate the point density within those circular radius based on the coverage. The non-empty boxes containing are plotted in red and the white areas represent empty boxes with no lighter points. Density and distribution of fuel can be assessed even visually. The circular areas shown in the figures can readily be used by practitioners using the overall fuel hazard assessment guide. For example, blue areas indicate plant coverage less than 20%. Based on the amount of near surface and elevated fuel, these areas do not require hazard reduction burning. The other areas represent plant coverage greater than 20%. These areas have to be checked and qualified for hazard reduction burning. At this point, a visiting fire practitioner can arrive at the site pre-prepared to ground truth the data and inspect the areas indicate the highest risk and possibly direct any burns away from the blue zones. Uh, this is the end of my presentation and I would like to say that UAV drones and LiDAR point cloud have become practically ubiquitous and represent a big data resource. Use of voxels as demonstrated in this paper has enabled a substantial value to increase the interoperability, reusability, and a practical application. The workflow developed is a low cost, processor efficient, and fit for the purposes of serving as a decision support tool to support the fire practitioners. The next step will focus to ground truth and calibrate the voxel analysis method, specifically improving the terrain estimates and near surface fuel. Thank you for your time and co uh, cooperation, and I'm looking forward to the Q&A session.